Ooh, it's been a while actually since part one, and of course things have changed because I've been learning, which in turn means that you will be learning too. <laughs> So here's part one, I'll link it up here and down there if you haven't seen that one. Um, I wanna approach this topic in two different ways now for part two. First, I wanna talk about the ways that you can discuss board games itself, discuss the board games themselves. And then the second half of the video is gonna dive into video techniques and filming techniques that I have been implementing and that I wanna show you as well. So let's go to start off with the review discussion itself. Now let me premise this by saying this is not the right way. This is not the only way to do a review. I know everyone has their own style of reviews and that's totally fine. These are just more so like pointers that I've learned and that I've gathered from feedback and constructive criticism for the past, I don't know, few months. And the majority of the constructive criticism and the feedback has actually been stemmed from you. So thank you all so much for that. So do not feel pressured in having to change the way you do reviews. Take this more so as here's how I approach reviews. Feel free to draw some inspiration and get some ideas from what I'm about to tell you. Okay, so first I like to think about the biggest question that people would have about a game and address it. So our reviews are gonna influence a purchasing decision, right? So I think it's very helpful to tackle like the one big question about a game. Usually it has to deal with gameplay and more specifically, it has to deal with whether a mechanism is too finicky to be fun or if a gameplay is lacking something. So for instance, one of my latest reviews was from Red Rising. And the biggest question I tackled there was, is the game too simple? For Bloodstone, it's a game that is epic, you know, it's huge on scale. And I was wondering, is it practical to play for two players? I think it's helpful to at least consider what players would be most concerned about before buying a game. And therefore, that's one way we can add structure to our views is to think about one focused, big question, and then kind of address that as we talk about the game. Second point, this is something that I mentioned often in my reviews too, but I do need to make it way more obvious in the way I describe it. And that's answering this question, what makes that board game unique? You know, our world of board games is exponentially growing and increasing, which is amazing. But on both the reviewer side and on the player side, I feel like an important set of questions to address is, why should I buy that game? What is making that game unique? What makes it stand out? You know, what mechanic is distinguishable from all the other hundreds of games that are releasing this month on Kickstarter, on retail, wherever they're releasing. Ultimately, when I'm playing the game that I'm going to be reviewing, and as I'm structuring my review, I'm always thinking about what makes this game different from every other game out there. Third point, and I would love to hear your opinions about this, please feel free to comment down below. Keep reviews short. I try to keep them between seven to 15 minutes max. In my opinion, I would rather see a shorter but more concise review and one that dives straight into you know what the game is about and you know how do you feel about the game and have some like very nice footage and highlights about the components. This is why I always maximize my editing when it comes to reviews. I mentioned this also in part one, but I think it's our job to give the game an opportunity to shine regardless of how we feel about it. It's very rare that I don't like a game, but I always try to find the good in the game at least. But obviously if there are things I don't like about it. I mentioned it along with all of its other problems. I still do, however, regardless how I feel, try to showcase the game as best as I can, because even if it's not right for me, it could be right for someone else. And the last major point that I think is helpful in structuring your reviews is to at least consider replayability. What makes you wanna pick up and play the game again? I was reorganizing my entire closet of board games right behind the camera, and I was thinking about my entire shelf of shame of all these games that I haven't played before, and all the games that I have played before. And it just got me thinking for reviews, you know, there are games that I do like, but would I wanna play it again? Maybe not. Ideally, if I ever had my own like YouTube giant studio space with a whole gaming room, I want like all the games there to be games that are 100% fun. Any one of those games on those shelves is a game that I wanna pick up and play again. So I think at least considering whether or not you would play a game again would also be an important point to bring up in your view as well. Those are my thoughts on that. Now let's go ahead and flip on over to the camera work side. I have some delicious new filming techniques for you or at least ones that I haven't explicitly pointed out yet. And here are th four new camera techniques for you to try out or at least new camera perspectives to try out when you are overlaying your B-roll. Number one is the point of view shot. So this one is where your camera is following your hand as you're moving pieces around the board. And I love doing this shot because it makes the viewer feel more connected with you. And it also feels like as if they're the ones who are playing the game. 
You'll see more of these kinds of shots, not only in the upcoming reviews, but also as I show you more playthroughs coming to both my channel and on Rado's channel. I have done it before in like the root gameplay, but I'm going to be implementing more of these going forward. Now, number two is the overview shot. I actually see this shot missing in a lot of reviews. And I think it's important because for people that are interested in the game that you're talking about, I think A, we should know how much space that this game is taking because we all have different gaming spaces. And B, I wanna see everything that's included in the box. So for the overview shot, I like to set up the box right in the middle because it is the focus. And then the main board, if the game has one, or like player boards, right in the front. And then everything else can just accent the side, all the miniatures, cards, dice, tokens, everything else can just be filling up all the negative space. It's basically how the game would be set up if it was actually gameplay, or at least organized in a way to compartmentalize and showcase all of the components that are coming in the board game. Now that leads me to filming tip number three, stabilize your footage. I don't know about you, but it does make me queasy when I see shots that are very shaky like this. Most of us are shooting handheld while you're filming, but some quick tips, you wanna make sure you tuck in your arms really tightly because you wanna slowly pivot your body from left to right backward and forwards very, very slowly. You are one motion as you are panning across. You do not want to extend your arms like this because this is incorporated as you are filming and getting all those shaky shots. Another tip is that you can also slow down your footage. So shoot in a high frame rate and then slow it down in post. If you want a detailed video on that, go ahead and let me know. I can make a whole video about stabilizing camera footage, but also you wanna throw on a warp stabilizer. You can just type it into your effects of any editing program. They'll have some form of a stabilization effect in the effects panel. And the last tip I have for you is to mix in shot for vertical components. Let me explain. So yes, we play board games flat. However, that doesn't mean that we have to film everything flat. Okay. When you stand up your components and you isolate them, it gives a lot more depth to your video. This is what makes your B-roll look way more cinematic. Reason why is because it's creating a separation between your subject like cards and little tokens and the background. Now if the background is our gaming table and or the board, there is no depth to that. So you don't have to stand up everything, but definitely mix in some shots where some components are vertical and they're isolated. And to add that little cherry on top, you can also add lights behind your components. That's what really gives that whole dreamy look that I use very often in my videos. I'm gonna make a whole new updated video about lights that I've been experimenting with and that I've been playing around with coming soon. So that is part two of how to make better board game reviews. So yeah, hopefully this video gives some fresh ideas for seasoned reviewers and for up and coming reviewers. Maybe it helps you give a better sense of how to organize your thoughts and film some B-roll. Hope you all enjoyed that video. Thank you for being here and have a wonderful day.